Again, welcome to this, this direct pasture presentation. A public health intervention in the form of just imparting uh, insight in how the body works mechanically as a mechanical structure stuck out in space and how you can exercise to correct your body's posture and therefore uh, benefit the body. This is, <laughs> this is the uh, presentation for level, this is one of five, but then I found out there's so little to say of six and seven that I just, in this particular setting, I'll just go on and make five, and then after I finish five, I'll go to six and do the little bit that's needed there, and then do the little bit that's needed seven, and I would have done the one version of all of it, okay? So this site, uh, site five, is the upper neck, lower back. I mean, upper back, lower neck. Quite often, right in that area, there's like a little hump where the back was round already, and then it makes a dive so it can take the head way out forward. That's that transition that thrusts the head forward that we're addressing. It positions the ear. When you get it right, you position the ear. The ear in before is ahead of the shoulder. It positions the ear over the shoulder when you get through with it. It is the elegance that I always saw. I, I had pictures of people that I admire. And there was a man I was supposed to have in this one that I didn't get in there. But uh, I, I, I remember the first time I saw someone with this very flat neck. And I guess I'd seen it in kids all along, but an adult with that sort of caught me off guard. And I, I talked to him and he gave me a picture and I meant to have it in this very first one. But we come to this enough for me to get his picture in there. But um, it is, it, it's a flatness that you get. It also, when you get through with the sixth level, it's that angle that, that is admired on young people. Now, after you stretch your skin, it doesn't go back. But it puts you in a position where you would have a, uh, the cervical and neck angle, the, the, where the neck and the chin comes together. That angle also gets prettier under this. Um, here we will address the logic of what muscles are being, what muscles are being, at, uh, uh, what muscles of the spine are needed by looking at where the spine becomes the site of origin. The site where the si spine becomes the site of origin is the site where the spine will go into extension if you make that area contract. So you can target, you can look at someone and say, that back is flat here. You need to find a muscle that activates the muscles in this area. Or the back is too round here. It doesn't have the right shape, but you tuck under a little bit. What would do that? It would be any muscle that would excite that area. That's the start of it. I guess you should start it. <laughs> We're going to play this so that we get in our posture real fast now. You get on your base, which means you're on initial tuberosities. Your feet, your knees are going down. That's, you just know that. Your feet are flat. Uh, your feet are secure. And your knees are going down. And your thighs, you know, slant down. The next one is the boldest level. Now, it should be getting to the point where it's, I don't even feel right if, my, if I'm dumped. Well, I can't dump out. That hurts. <laughs> my gut can't go for a dump, you know. Uh, that hurts. Uh, and slumping soon tires me in the back too. So this one, I don't let myself go but so far into not having a level bowl. You know, that dumping bowl is a little hard on me. Fire up your core. That means don't let your stomach muscle relax. Not totally. Not totally. You want your stomach muscle to start developing tone. And the way to do that, once you've learned that you can breathe, without using your stomach, without, while holding your stomach tight, then you should be able to figure out how to develop a habit. <laughs> you know, because at first people think I'm telling them not to breathe because they think of sucking up their stomach. But you're not sucking up your stomach, you're contracting your stomach. And that's two different things. And this one is what you want to do. There are plenty of people who will tell you they hold their stomach in and it makes a difference in their posture. Next thing is make room 
for your heart and lungs. And this is what pa babies specialize in. And that's where the chest is wide. It's wide both uh, here in the front. They have wide lifted chests, right? That makes the back flatter because you widen this, okay? And then the next one is lean your head back. This is the easiest way. There are a couple of ways. My sister, my sister teaches this too. And the way she does it is she tells you to take your thumb and take your head back like that. I tend to overdo that one in the front. So mine is take the head back till you feel the, the uh, mastoid in line with the rest of the body. You have to keep the other body in line. And then once you have that, you've got your hackles. I call them hackles. You flatten that area. Now, holding that feeling where the chest, because that lifts the chest, holding that and letting the head just slide down on its own because there are reflexes that will put the eyes on the rising. Your job then just gets to be keep this lifted, keep that flat while your body decides where your eyes go. And then lift your crown. You're now sitting up straight. Let's start moving, okay? At this level, level five, we're, this is level five, and here I will teach you spinal alignment correct, correction using the muscles of the spine. In other words, how do you activate, target muscles of the spine in order to get spinal alignment? In other words, there are muscles that are in the spine. Can we use them in any way to get the, or how do we target them? First of all, know this, any muscle in front of, behind, in front of the spinal vertebra, the vertebra and the disc, mainly the disc. Anything behind, behind, in front of that, any muscle that contracts in front of that will flex the body. Any muscle that flexes behind the spine extends the spine. And it's just a location. That's the site of rotation. This will not work. <laughs> I will make it work uh, when, when I get it into uh, editing. It was supposed to flex and not, uh, but it does. So that was to show you that the spine flexes over this disc. Bing, bing. Okay. Another way of thinking of it, if there's a weight pulling on the front of the body and it's ahead of this, the spine is going to flex it. It's the same as if a muscle did it. If there's a weight, body weight or anything, that pulls behind the spine, lines up behind the spine, it's going to extend the spine. It's the same as a muscle pulling it or weight. Okay? Now that's how you get spinal extension. Spinal extension is behind the spine. We just said that. So all of these muscles here that come into the spine, if they contract, they will make the spine extend. These are the muscles that will make the, uh, the, the these are the muscles that will extend the spine because they are behind here. Even some of these muscles are behind here. These are abdominal muscles. They're behind here. They must have flexing power, uh, extension power, because they are behind the disc. This is a, 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 a and that was a, a, a visible human project model. Here's another. This is of the uh, thoracic uh, spine. This is the very top of the lungs. This is the spine. These are the shoulder blades. So we're coming in at the level. These are the deep spinal muscles. We'll, I'll call them deep intrinsic spinal muscle. You'll learn about them today. These are the erecti spinae. These are muscles that go to the spine and then to the rib cage. These only go between spine and spine. Okay, vertebra to vertebra. These go vertebra to rib cage. This right here would be 
the rhomboid. And this right here would be the trapezius. It's where we cut. Okay? So the trapezius is here. The rhomboid is here. And then the, the rib muscles and the spinal muscles, all of those tie directly. The, in the point of the, 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 the thing is all of them go and attach to the spine of the vertebra. Okay? And anything that attaches to the spine of the vertebra will make that vertebra extend. The muscle that attaches directly to the spine, the muscle that gets its origin at the spine, extends the spine. That's the point. These are the muscles that I call the deep intrinsic muscles. They are right there in that little pocket area, right in there in the spine. And when they are really fat, they make a bulge. They can actually be very, and they go between one vertebra and another, and they can be very fat, sort of robust. That's what you want them to be. And in that case, when they contract, they are really make this stick that lock that spine into extension because they are right there to put it right there. I mean, that action is immediate and short, short, stubby muscles making the extent, the spine extend. Those erect the spine. Those are your firmest erect, at erecting the spine. The, uh, because they are short and they just go right here. Think about it. Every one of these can lock down that way. Every one of these can lock down that way. And then they lock down at angles. Now they use unilaterally, they twist the body, they do other things. But all of them at the same time activated makes the spine a firm site of origin. You, when you need that, uh, uh, that spine to, to move some other part of the body, he needs to get firm. And that's how it works. These go tight. These are the, make the spine a site of origin. These are the erector spinae. They're they, 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 but they go, they, they, there are some of them who go spine to spine, but they are longer um, and span a, 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 a longer distance. Okay, and they uh, also go to the ribs. So I always think of them as the rib shapes too, because if you got to change the shape of the spine, you got to make the, ch the rib change shape, and these muscles are a part of that. Okay, so all of these muscles erect the spine. Okay, so anytime you see Sonny Mountain sitting like this, you know one thing. They're not, they, 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 the spinal muscles, the deep spinal muscles are relaxed because they're, they're being told to relax. Nothing there is exciting them. So there are two ways that you can end up with flexion of the spine. Extension of the spine are the erector spinae and the deep intrinsic muscles uh, contracting. Ex flexion of the spine, though, can come from two ways. You're not flexing any muscle, and so gravity is just pulling you over. You're doing what you do, and gravity has got you, right? That's flexion. But there's another reason for flexion. This person right here is fit. This, you can see he's into his guns. He's flat in his stomach. But what he's done is either by the sport he does or someone needs to counsel him, his chest, his flexors of his body on the front side of the body have out, out overpowered his extensors. So he's un uh, unevenly developed. And so his is not out of shape. His is exaggerated one way, taking another area out. Those are some sports. If, you, if, you're, around, um, um, if you're around someone who, a swimmer, butterfly, they will have sleek bodies. I mean, really impressive bodies with sleekness of it. But the round back is there. Why? Because that sport requires strong efforts in these muscles, the front muscles, to, do to get you through that water. But when it comes out of that water and you're going up, there's less resistance and therefore no development. And then they hit it again. And so what they end up with is very sleek bodies, but very round shoulders, very overdeveloped. So not all postures are because somebody didn't do something. 
Some of it is what you did. That's just, I mean, that's the reason there's no shame in your game. It's just who you are, you know? Now, if, he can, if he's still active in that sport, he needs to be working on some, some balance. You know what I mean? Although I, I don't think maybe you can't be a world-class uh, butterfly swimmer and, and develop in your back for extension. But afterwards, maybe you want to go after it. <laughs> after you got your gold, then go back and get your, your body back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, number four that you should know about muscles is for the, sp for the sp spine to act as the site of origin of non-spinal muscles, uh, for them to contract using the spine as its origin, the deep intrinsic, that's what I'm telling you about, the deep intrinsic muscles must contract to extend the spine in that site to give strength to the origin to accomplish whatever pull you're trying to get. And, and therefore, I'm going to list some muscles that you've already learned now, okay? And I'm going to show you where they take their origin. I'm going to tell you what muscle initiates it. So the way that it works is, when, when I'm telling you about this, I'm saying that there's a muscle that needs the spine to do the job it's, it has to accomplish. It's got to use the spine as its origin, okay? And let's go with one. The first one is the rectus abdominis, the pleaty muscle, the one that gets the ripples. You remember, we contract it to initiate the spine, the spinal, the, the waist, the entire waist light, lighting up. You remember, we wanted every muscle in, when we set off our girdle, when we set off our girdle for the waist, the muscle that we had to use was we start here. We activate this. Well, that activates the spinal muscles. It activates everyone in between, but the spinal muscles must activate for all of them to have a strong site of origin. So this is the one that excites it. This is where the excitation must happen in these muscles right here for this whole thing to pull back. So if you see someone who's flat here, you know, this is their problem. You know where they need to go. They need to go here. L pull this one in a position. They, they have to be balanced. They have to be all the things we've been taught to be. You know, you got to be balanced. You got to be, uh, you know, uh, sitting on your, sitting on your, your uh, so that your bowl is level. Sitting so your bowl is level. And then you contract. And then this lights up. That is how you activate that area, deliberately. So if you're talking to, if you're sit, looking at yourself and you don't like that you don't have a curve right here, that you don't have your shape there, that you don't have your waist like you want it, it isn't, it isn't your genetics, it's your body position. It's the muscles you have to activate. You can reverse, you're not gonna look like me, I don't care what you do. You're not going to look like the one that looks the best at this, possibly. Okay, you don't know. <laughs> but you're going to get that to light up reliably if you make the demand. If you sit there and make the demand, this area will learn to contract. And it will get stronger. And as it gets stronger, it manifests itself better. The muscles of the spine get active. The erectile spinae get erect. All the muscles of that grid of muscles that made your corset, all of them come alive because you activated, you made this your origin for your rectus spinae, for your uh, uh, rectus abdominis. Okay, there's one. You know all of them, but here we go. Okay, here goes the next. This is Peck. Peck minor is the widener of this part, right? He pulls this open. But to do that, pec minor must lift your rib cage up and out, up and out. That must, that, and then the energy is picked up by the intermediary, which is the lower fibers of, the lower fibers of 
trapezius, and it goes all down the spine. So the muscles that activate are the lower muscles of the spine. So if someone is too round in this area, you know, the back is too round, this is the initiator, this is the secondary that, that, that makes the chain come alive, and it requests the spine to erect so it can anchor so it can have the origin. So the origin comes from here and it pulls up here to make the insertion happen there. It's a chain. But the interesting thing is, if you were trying to figure out how to get this right, you're really trying to say, how do I get these extensors? How do I get these uh, muscles of the spine to straighten my spine? Start the chain, feed on back, right? Because the, the work has to come here. If you're going to flatten that back, the work has to come here. And that has to be those little chain of muscles that I showed you. Ching, 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 ching. You know, the, the deep intrinsic, they got to become alive. They, they need to get strengthened. This is how you play the game. It's like knowing where you put your rubber band. <laughs> This is your rubber band. This is the hook that you got to hang on this to give this the work to make this get right. It's like orthodontics. You got to know. <laughs> you got to know where to put the rubber band. Now, you, you two round in the upper back, like the man I just showed you. The one who's like the swimmer. He was round other areas, but it was his upper back that was, that was muddy. And if you look at his chest, it wasn't right, right there in that area, you know. So what he has to do, but he, was, he needed both areas. But what he needed to do is go out here in the pec area and tell the pec to start demanding that the rhomboid make a demand on the upper spine <laughs> to flatten that area. That's how it works. That's what you got to hook the rubber band to. It just has to go through two steps to get to the activator, right? And th that's how I always see it. When I see something, I'm, I was always wondering, how do I make the deep intrinsic muscles come alive? There's the linkage. You've got to go to the muscle that demands it. This demands it. It doesn't demand it any other way than tell this to lift that. Yang, right? Lift, activate that. That will flatten that. The next one up is uh, what I call the hackles. It's the top spines, the top two spines of the thoracic. In other words, where the first and second rib come in, and then the lower two of the cervical spine. At that area, a, a lot of people will make a break. In other words, it's going round right there, but all of a sudden, then, not, I mean, it, it, it's there. So what you want to do is that area, you want to shut down these little spiky things. You know, those vertebrae, because they do hang up. I can feel mine. I've always been able to feel mine. I, and, I, and I used to think it was arthritis. <laughs> I didn't know it was just spines. That's what they feel like. <laughs> what you want to do is close them. And the way that I do it is I teach in, to do it is just with, the, with everything held like you're supposed to hold it. Just take the head back. Just roll the head back so that you feel the chest lift. When you roll the head back, because these are attached to rib one and two. This will lift when you take the head back. Now, once you got the head back, you will have closed that. And that's the end of that step. Levels, so here's what we're looking at. And so the muscles that got fired up were these. This is where I got the muscle to fire up. 
I didn't do the same picture for this one. But this is where I got the neck to fire up. Because, and then these lift. So that's what you have to think of. You have to think that I've got to get my head, for that to happen, the person has got to get their head back to make these close down and that lift. That gives you that correction. And then the final one, okay. <laughs> this is the new because uh, what makes that happen, the muscle that initiates that one is called the serratus posterior. And he goes from the shoulder blade, he's under rhomboid. He goes from the, the, the ribs themselves. He's like fingers. Serratus is like fingers always. Serratus goes here. He catches this rib, that rib, that rib, that rib. And then he pulls, let me see how this go. I, I figured this one out that one time. He pulls, he's up here, he's up here. He pulls back. This flips back, if you're in the back, this flips back like that. This comes back. When it does that, it pulls this back. The ears go over the shoulder, right? And this muscle tightens and flattens that back there. Now, here's a bonus you get, though. <laughs> when you're doing it, if you do this, notice that right down here, you're going to feel a new tightness down here, right in the bottom. That's the serratus posterior inferior. For some, I think in order to balance that pull back, you get this to tighten, and he pulls, he pulls like, he pushes up under these ribs. He pushes up under these ribs in order to pull these ribs back. You can feel your lower back go up under you a little bit more as that goes back. He's a bonus. He supports this because you're taking your weight back. He supports this and he gives you a better co contour in that lower back. You know, that roundness that everybody has when they're like this, this is just another push. Just like this is actually uh, a stronger pull but is in support of the rhomboid. Look at them and they're in the same position. So those areas get wrong so long that there's, I mean, so often there's double muscle there. This is in the same place as some of the rib muscles that lift you, but it does it when that extra support is needed. If you do this, feel how, my, my stomach tightens more too, but feel how this area right here tightens and lifts up under me. So serratus posterior inferior supports the body when serratus posterior superior takes the body back. It pushes, it counters. It's like one pushes, one pulls. So that's a bonus I didn't know about, okay? Now, that was what I was gonna cover for five. That was, Getting you to see the muscles and the importance of the deep muscles was the level of five. Okay? Now, but we had six. And there isn't much to six. And there isn't much to seven. So I took six, level six, and just tacked it on. <laughs> because I just left you with your head. <laughs> I, le I just left you with your serratus, pulling your head back and pushing your spine forward, right? I got you there, okay? So there you are with your head like this and your ears now on your shoulders. Now, how do you get your eyes on the horizon? Hold that feeling of your shoulder being where it is. Hold that and then just let go of your head and let your eyes seat your head. Let your eyes bring the head on the horizon. Don't do anything. There are reflexes there. Reflexes that will get your head right. You're just trying to keep this right. Don't get in that because once I get into that, every time I get into that, I've been working on that. I, I sit in the mirror and I work on that one and I work on that. And when I show Jackie what I got, she say, you're straining too hard. 
It's not your job. <laughs> you have to know when something isn't your job. To go from here to settle, here's the head back to, the neck is in the right place. Here's the head lifted and now it needs to drop back to a new position. Here is the neck straightened up and that isn't your job to get the head right. Let the reflex work. <laughs> Leave it alone. Just get yourself there. Keep your ears. Make sure after you get there, your goal is to keep this over the, the, over the thing with the lift and feeling this tight and that pushing. And then hold that and then just go on and let your eyes come down because your head, your neck said that's how it's supposed to be. That's six. Six say you can't do anything about it, but let it happen. Seven. Seven is, uh, is lift. You're going for your greatest height. You're going to become that candle. You're going to become that lift. You're going to get your greatest height here. And to get that is you have to get on everything you've always had. You get on your seat. You get your, your bowl level. You, you pull your stomach in. You get your chest right. In all locations, you get the neck like you think you're supposed to be. And then go back and do a double take. Look at the core and see if you feel you've gotten all the height you can out of the spine, right in the area where the contracted muscles of the waist would make it strong. And that's right in the lumbar area, right between those things. Make sure that it's not only contracted, it's lifted. Then the next thing you want to do is go to, this is, this is uh, that's fire up your core. The next one is make room for heart at the level of the pectoralis minor trapezius, which means you're coming over the shoulder, which is the high one. Make sure that you are stretching for what you can get and you feel the pec from T to, to, from the various lowest rib up until mid back, that you make sure you feel that you've pulled your height, you've extended your spine, and you've gotten your height out of it. Go to serratus anterior, pull it out, feel it go up into the run board, and make sure the run board is giving you all the height it will give you. Go to the neck, get it back, and then see if you've gotten all the height out of that you can as your head drops forward. And now that you're at your highest, that's seven. You're floating. Now go back to soft. Don't make any of them hard, but make sure all of them are there. Make yourself as tall as possible. Okay, that's how you play the game. And that's how you use your muscles. You have to know where they're working. I can tell you what is, isn't working. I, I can state it like that. Need to get to that. You can too now if you play with it. Look at it. Later on, this, this, this series that I'm giving up now, I'm giving up because I'm going to surgery. I had to finish these. Um, I'm giving this up for a little while. Uh, I'll be putting it on the web while I'm in the hospital and recuperating. But uh, then I'll come back and I can take, take every postural type and you can start seeing what you're not doing as you're learning, if you want to learn that. But you don't even need that. You actually have everything you need right now. You know every step it takes to sit up straight. What you need to do is practice. What you need to do is develop the muscles. What you need to do is... <laughs> You know, make it fun, make it, make it fun. Return, I'll, I'll return as soon as I can. Well, first of all, I gotta get out there. <laughs> but then I'll start and I'll improve, I'll improve. This is new and uh, I thank you for coming. I thank you, I thank you for coming. If you, um, if you know anyone who could, could, uh, could uh, benefit from the knowledge, pass the word along. 
when it comes to parents, um, your child is your example. Now, I'm going to tell parents how to use the kid. If you got a three-year-old or less, you better learn. <laughs> That's as good as it can get. Take a picture of them. Show them how pretty they used to sit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them lose that. You know, watch. And when they start losing it, say, whoa, 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 baby, baby, back up, back up. You're losing something. You know what I mean? But they are your examples. If they're older than that, when you know that, that when you, after, after you get to know who I am and what I'm presenting and that I'm no threat to your child, um, then turn your child on because I think it's a lifetime thing. Um, the earlier, I, you know, if you're, if you're young and you, you, um, you, you, you still carry your youth with you. This is a beautiful time. You don't ever have to get to be as round as, as the, those of us who didn't know what we were doing were doing. All you got to do is put in a little time and keep your, and keep your youth. You, you know what I mean? Keep your youth and regain your youth. And if, uh, for the 50-year-old sent them, the back pain sent them. You know, later on, I'm going to be able to tell you, people you know on a diabetic monitor, I'm going to ask for them too. I think I can help them. <laughs> the ones who have uh, type 2 diabetes. I think sitting up straight, uh, these muscles use that, but that's in the future. That's in the future. Thank you very much for coming. Send, the, send, a, send that people along. Uh, like me. Do all the things you know how to do. You know, like, like the site, if you like the site. Uh, pass the word along. If you know anybody who just retired, tell them to learn how to sit up. Uh, it's the easiest exercise you're going to do. I don't know how I, I can make it cheaper. <laughs> I, can't, I can't afford to pay you. <laughs> the only thing that makes this better for you is if I can pay you to come. I can't afford that one right now. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh,